Okay, so the next uh, thing we're going to introduce is the concept of uh, conditional uh, random variables. So conditional random variables. Okay, uh, so again, the best way to see this is uh, with an example. Uh, so uh, basically, we're going to keep our example of having this uh, square, which we are picking uh, a random point from. So here is our square, and again, we have... Uh, whichever way you want to think of it, either we're ascribing an ordered pair of real numbers or we're ascribing we have two random variables x and y. In this case it's probably better and easier to think in terms of two random variables x and y. So the x random variable is ascribing to each point its x coordinate, so some number between 0 and 1, and the y random variable is ascribing some value between 0 and 1. And again it, it's equally likely that your x value is anywhere, so again x is going to be uniformly distributed on 0 and 1, and y, again, is uniformly likely to be at any of these y values, so it's uniformly distributed on uh, 0 to 1. Right, uh, so what we now want to do introduce is the concept of conditional, conditional random variables. So um, remember that we can uh, define a joint, uh, a joint random variable, uh, and we can define the PDF the op for this joint random variable x and y. Uh, so uh, the joint PDF is, in a way, the intuitive way of viewing the joint PDF is it's take a tiny infinitesimal little little region in your in your square, um, and it's the probability that it's going to be within that region uh, is roughly the way you can think of the um, PDF. It's the it's the infinitesimal version of probability. It's the probability, it, approximately, if you have a tiny little square, delta x uh, by delta y, i.e. this length is delta x by delta y, and we're assuming now that the square is between 0 and 1. Uh, so, um, really what we're doing is we're working in the, um, if we have, uh, in fact, get rid of this, get rid of this. What we really have is now the joint random variable, x and y, uh, which is uh, mapping you onto uh, it's attaching you a um, a ordered pair of real numbers, and it's ascribing you a, an ordered pair within the Cartesian product of zero one by zero one. Okay, uh, so if I want to know what, uh, so if I draw this as a um, this um, this all re uh, square uh, zero one by zero one as a subset of R two. So here it is now one uh, zero zero one. Okay, uh, and I take some tiny little region. So I go to a point. Firstly, I go to a point x, y. So this is my x, and this is the y. So you plug in your little x and your little y, and then you take some tiny delta x and tiny delta y. Then it gets very, very. Then it's true that as an approximation, this is very, very good approximation that it's going to be uh, in this tiny little square. The prob that's a very good approximation uh, for the probability that it's going to be within that tiny little square. So this. Uh, in a way, um, is uh, and of, and it gets co closer and closer to being true. The smaller you make delta x and delta y, so it's kind of the infinitesimal version of probability. Uh, is a good intuitive way of thinking about what this is. So what we can now ask is, what is uh, what what I can now ask is let let's say I know, say I know the value of x. Know the value of x of big X. So I know what X coordinate I am. So I know, say, that I'm on this line. Uh, big X is equal to a certain value. So this is a fixed event now. And I now want to ask, what is the, um, what is the PDF of Y given that I am at, on this line X? So I can ask, what is the probability density function that uh, I ha uh, for my value Y given that I know my value of X? Um, uh, and this is evaluated as a function of, well, it's evaluated as a function of x and y. So you have to plug in the value of x that you have gotten, i.e. you know this value of x, and now you want to know uh, what is the probability that you have some cer a certain value little y, given that, you know you given that you know that you were that little x. So what we want to know is what is the conditional PDF. And remember, keep thinking about this as this infinitesimal version of probability. So what we are asking is, if we know we're on this line, and I take a point in here of a certain y coordinate, what I really want to know is what's the probability, the infinitesimal probability that I'm at that point, basically. 
Okay, and basically, just completely analogous to the uh, probability, uh, to the um, to the equations that we saw for discrete random variables. Uh, this is good. Well, for discrete prob, well for probability spaces years ago, well, yonks ago, um, this is equal to uh, the probability that you are at that point x, which is um, the, pro the joint uh, PDF, uh, roughly. Remember, this is infinitesimal. We're dealing with tiny, tiny little region. So, uh, it's, it's, if you're dealing with an infinitesimal region, you can view it intuitively as being this. Uh, what, if you wanted to rigorize this, you'd obviously have to keep in the delta x, delta y. So if you wanted the probability that it's in a tiny region, delta x, delta y, then this uh, is a probability then. And if you times this by delta x, delta y, again, this forms a tiny little probability. Uh, the probability that you're in that tiny little region. And now it's going to be equal to, uh, well, actually, no, sorry, this, it should only be multiplied by delta y, because you're given uh, the given the x value, so all that's changing now is your y value. So you only have the delta y there, and we need to divide it now through uh, by the actual probability that you got that value x, which is you need to divide it by the marginal distribution of x evaluated at x, which is you what you uh, times of course delta x, which is approximately the probability uh, that you actually get that value x. So it's completely analogous to this that the probability of an event A, given that the event B has happened, is equal to the probability of A intersect B divided by the probability of B. This is effectively the probability that you get that individual value x. So uh, that you select that value x, uh, that's the event that we are saying has happened. Now, if you, mar if you get the marginal distribution, that's the probability that you get a specific value x, i.e. you get one of these lines. So the probability that you get this line, which is this, uh, this blue event, is equal to that, where delta x is getting infinitesimally small. Okay, the probability that, uh, that the event, uh, that you get a specific y value happens, uh, and uh, that you were in this blue region, uh, that you were in this blue region, is the PDF times delta x delta y. The delta x is cancel. The probability that A happens given B is over here, and again you need to multiply it by some infinitesimal delta y uh, to actually make it sort of like um, to make it non-infinitesimal. So take that delta y away from it. Uh, and uh, that's overall the statement that you get, so that the conditional PDF of y, given that x has occurred as a function of x and y, is equal to the joint PDF of x and y uh, as a function of x of little x and little y, divided by the marginal distribution of x as a function of x. So basically what this says is if you want to know the probability that you get a certain y value, so we are given we are given that x has happened. We know that big X takes on a certain value, little x. And now I want to know what is the probability that I get a, the p. What at least is the probability density function that I get a certain y value? So this is going to be a function of whichever x value you actually picked, and obviously it's going to be a function of which y value you are now inquiring about. And it's equal to the probability that you get that specific uh, x value and that specific y value in our original probability space, so in the whole probability space, divided by the probability that the event, this blue event, happens in the first place, which is the probability that you get that specific x value in uh, in uh, the overall um in the overall probability space. And of course, these are all probability density functions, so to convert them from being probability density functions, what you have to do is multiply them by some delta x, which is what all of this uh, nonsense here was about.